All right, more Chad Pipes today. So uh, I want to address a user's question that brings out some really important issues when you're first starting to learn to use pipes and use the Linux or Unix command line, uh, because this is one of those things that definitely confused me when I was a new user, and it might confuse you. Actually, this particular question brings up a lot of little problems that it'll, that'll get in your way, so it's worth talking about. Okay, so in the last video, which you don't have to have seen, but in the last video, right, we had uh, we had a list of all the manuals. We wanted D menu to give us a prompt, pick one of those, and display it in Zathura. Uh, just show that P show a PDF of it automatically. So someone was inspired by that to do something a little similar. So what he's trying to do is he has a folder of videos. And he wants to get a D menu menu of that. He wants to select one of them and play it in MPV. Okay. Uh, so it looks like some people have already given him hints as to what the answer is. But I want to explain what, why what he was doing wasn't working, and you know what what exactly is going on. So I actually have a folder here. So let's let's actually reproduce what he's doing first off. Now I have a folder here that's actually full of a bunch of videos. So I can do the same thing here. So let's say I take all the MP, MKV files and I pipe those into D menu. So D menu, you know. L30 is going to give us a list showing 30 of them. We can start typing one in, and uh, we can select one, and it'll print it to standard output. Now, at this, you know, sort of in the same way, you might know that MPV, the the uh, video player uh, that he's trying to pipe them into, does actually uh, accept standard input, right? So you can take hyphen as standard input, and you might think, okay, so great, we have this, so I should be able to do something like this. I can say MPV and then hyphen, and then I should be able to run that. So I'm going to try, I'm going to pick one of those, and it's going to fail to recognize the file format. What exactly is going on here? So it's important to remember what exactly you're piping from place to place, okay? When we do ls and we pipe that into D menu, we are not piping files. We are typing, we are piping texts. We, we are just typing the text output of the ls command. They happen to be file names, but we're not piping files. We're just piping the text into D menu. And when we select one of those with D menu, it is going to be outputting text as well. So if we input, if we take that and give it to MPV, there are actually a couple problems that we might have here. But uh, one, one important one is that MPV is not actually receiving a video. It's receiving text. So if you select one of these, if you select, you know, uh, comparing Arch Linux Rices, if you select that, that text, it is going to try and read that if, as if it is a video file with that text as the content. That's the problem. Okay. So people give them some solutions here, but uh, I'll, I'll show you how to, how to, I guess, come across or overcome this problem. There are multiple ways, of course. Um, one of the ways is actually, instead of using pipes, if we do something like MPV, uh, well, actually, this might show another error that's going to vex you, but uh, let's do this instead where we have this, all of the output, this file name that we pick is going to be the argument of MPV. Now, we can run that. And we'll actually see we'll get a lot of errors here. And why that's a problem is because this is like the second thing that confuses people. When you're dealing with files with a bunch of spaces, a lot of times on the command line, well, really all the times on the command line, they're going to be treated as different arguments. So you want to make sure to put those in quotation marks. Okay. But if we run that, that should, all right, so that works. So we can get an output for, you know, now what's happening, we're not using pure pipes. We're not piping something di directly to MPV. Um, instead, we are getting text output that we choose and putting that in quotation marks so we don't you know, mess up the spaces and then running MPV on that. So that would be an appropriate one-liner for that. Now, let's say hypothetically we wanted to use nothing but pipes just for fun. Okay, You could do something like this. You would have to use Xargs, and there are different ways of doing this. So for example, I could say um, there, are, there are silly ways of doing this too. So let's say Xargs cat. Now, if we just run this, it's going to take, um, actually, I might have to put quotation marks in this as well. But if I run xargs cat and select one of these, yeah, so there would have to be quotation marks here. I don't know if you can actually do something goofy like that. That's not going to work, is it? OK, whatever. Um, anyway, the way I would do this and the way that I did this in a script recently is actually using xargs. 
um, but uh, doing making it a little different. Okay, so xargs allows you now if you just run xargs mpv you might think that you know basically we talked about it in the last video but xargs basically takes standard input and creates a command out of it um so in this situation whatever text would be the output of this xargs basically is going to put it right besides mpv okay so if i run that and select one it's going to try and run on that but we actually have the same uh, issue that we had a second ago, right? Because really it's treating this text, it's treating all the different words as different files, and that isn't working. So what you have to do with XARGs is you give it the capital I option. And this allows you to give it some kind of string. Uh, the one I always use and a lot of other people use is just open and close brackets, okay? And it says, okay, whenever XARG sees that open and close brackets, it's going to actually put the input there. Okay, so I can do something like this, mpv, uh, quotation marks, and then open and close brackets. Now this should work, okay? And it does work, right? So now, uh, keep in mind what's happening here is, um, or it, what's happening in the other situation where we ran mpv on the whole thing. Um, the thing that is getting to mpv is not the file name. Or, or the thing that MPV is like actually processing is not the file name. It is processing the actual file. That is, if MPV is just run on a file name, that is what it does. But when it's receiving stuff on standard input, it reads that as if it, you are like just directly streaming a video into that. Now that's very useful in some circumstances. So for example, um, you know, you could, uh, I mean, you could pipe like video output from like a security camera into MPV and it would receive that, right? But you can't just pipe, uh, you know, text to it. Okay, that, that's the thing to t keep away. So it's important to keep in mind, there's a difference between text that is a file name and the actual content of a file. That's the problem here. So um, I'll show you uh, an implementation actually pretty similar to this last command that I had. Um, I, I guess a sort of real life implementation, although it is a useless real life implementation. Now this is sort of a 30 year old boomer thing, but there was this old show back in the day. It was a pretty good show. No, it actually was a terrible show, but I, for whatever reason I wanted to download it. It's called Mystery Science Theater 3000. It played at the night. It played during the night. It was like just guys watching. It'd be guys watching a movie, movie and like commenting on it. Doesn't matter. Um, but I've, I was downloading this DVD collection of them that, of course, has all the different uh, separate movies separate. And because it's so big, I'm downloading, I'm basically picking which ones to download one by one. Okay. But while it's downloading, I wanted to be able to watch, you know, watch whichever ones of these are finished. So I made a little script, basically pretty close to what we just talked about to do exactly this. Let me show you what it looks like. It is MST. So I'm going to open that up. So here's what we do here. Now I, I'll actually reproduce. You can probably actually make out what's going to happen. Looks pretty familiar. Um, so I'm using du here. People always get mad when I use du in videos, by the way. People always are like, why don't you use find? Why don't you use ls or something like that? It's Find triggers my autism because its syntax is different. So I just don't like it. And ls has its own problems. But anyway, it doesn't matter. This is just the script on my own computer. But anyway, in this context, so a d uh, DUA is doing is so we're going into my incomplete torrents directory specifically the the mystery science theater collection we're running that and that outputs all the file names but it also outputs all the file sizes so I get rid of that with cut um, so again you could do it with find I, I'm sick I, I have to say it because I know people are gonna nag me about it I don't use find just don't I do occasionally but you know I don't like it. So D menu. So I'm going to pipe that into D menu in the way that we expect. Actually, it looks like I made it case insensitive. So we get three, you know, 30 of those. Now notice by default, it is printing out all the files and directories, but also these uh, part files. And those are just incomplete files. And I don't really want those since again, you know, I'm downloading these gradually. So what I do is I grep out only those, maybe I should move my face, I grep out only those that end in AVI and not part AVI. So if I, if we look back at these, right? So the ones incomplete have part at the end, but if I 
tell it, oh no, grep out the ones with ABI and then dollar sign for an end of a, end of a line, it's only gonna show me, um, actually, oops, I need to put that before D menu. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sure some of you guys were yelling at your computer screen because I was doing it wrong, but uh, oops. So grep out only those complete, send them to D menu. And um, so now we have only the complete ones. And then like I talked about before, we can send them to Xargs. Now, of course, again, we have two options. We can say MPV and then put this as an argument to MPV. Okay, so that is one possibility. So we can play this movie. That works fine. Okay, but at the same time, we could also, as I do in this script, and again, I didn't do it for any particular reason. Um, it might actually be, be better not to use Xargs here, but uh, that's happened to be how I wrote it when I just sort of, you know, mashed it out one day. So we can do this, select one of these movies, and there it is, okay? So that's basically it. So that's a real life implementation, but um, to review what you should take away from the video, there's a difference when you're piping magical things to different places. Remember what you're piping. Now, in most cases, you're piping text, and while some programs can read things as standard input, um, piping to them text is not always what, it, literal text is not what you want. Sometimes you want file content. And even in the example of the last video, when I did, uh, what was the file I named it? Uh, mansplain. Um, even in this situation, Zathura is not reading text directly. It's reading actually PDF, I mean, the PDF format is actually text, but it's formatted in a, you know, a format that Zathura can read. Zathura here does not read a file name. It reads the content of a file. Okay, and in the same way, if you want to read something on MPV, you have to read, it has to be file content, it can't be text. All right, so anyway, hopefully that clarifies you, uh, clarifies that for you. So remember that, and remember also to just uh, take care to avoid spaced file names or know how to work around them. So see you guys next time.